Hey guys, what's going on? Coming at you with a Monday morning video. So I've made a couple videos in a while. I've uh, just been, again, really busy with stuff, but I just wanted to follow up basically on some of the stuff I've been buying, why, at what cost point, where I think the market's going in October. Obviously it's a new month, so September historically is a brutal month in general, so it's usually the worst on average, the worst returning month of the year. So to no surprise, I know when I started investing in 2019, it was a red month. When I invested in 2020, red month, 2021, red month, 2022 or so. So of the four years I've basically been investing seriously, every September has been a red month. So uh, it's historically that, doesn't always mean it's gonna be a red month, but this this month was uh, last September, or September that just passed was no different than the last three. So I did uh, the same thing I did every single year prior. I just dollar cost average my favorite positions, just had cash available. In July and August, we had that like mini rally where the QQQ went up to the 50% Fibonacci retracement line. Historically, if you hit the, if, if you put a bottom in in July and you go up, like we put the bottom in July 16th and you get to the 50% retracement of that bottom, historically or statistically, it's very hard to make a new low. Ironically, we did make a new low. I believe it was Friday or Thursday, one of the last couple of days of September. So that kind of breaks that whole trend apart. Um, but I do think there was just more added fear in the past month, uh, more than what people you know inspected with the energy in the UK and then uh, the UK, obviously, the, or the British pound. You know, they're they're literally printing money right now in a high inflationary environment, which is going to ruin the currency. So a lot of people are fleeing to the US dollar, which is bad for the global economy. So. There's a lot of added stuff, like major added stuff that kind of is going on right now. I think that's why the market's really selling off extra, in my opinion. Um, as far as a long-term investor and, you know, obviously living inside the United States, I really think it's all just short-term FUD, basically. So, uh, you know, long-term it will all work out. If anything, I, puts, I think this puts our U.S. economy in a stronger position. It's just my opinion long-term. But so, yeah, so what I've been doing is just basically our cost averaging. We're at 52 week lows, and uh, I'm going to talk about some of those points and where I think the Fed's going to go uh, the remainder of this year and then the beginning of next year. So, title is Fed Pain Incoming 100%. We're going to get some more Fed Pain. Jerome Powell spoke a couple weeks ago saying that he's going to continue to rate hike. He wants to get to 4.5% at least. So, you're, 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 you're pulling, you're, you're tightening a good a bit about neutral is about 2.25 to 2.5%. That's kind of where they want the federal funds rate to be. So anything above greater than that number, they're tightening. So the higher the number, like the higher the number is, the more they're tightening. So the more pain there's gonna be. However, what I think the Fed is messing up on, <clears throat> they delayed this heightening process. And now <clears throat> what they're doing is they're, um, they're basically trying to correct it quicker. So it's like a big, I look at it as like a big pendulum. So here it was too stimulus, here it's too tightening. Right now, I think we're like there. We wanna be here, so like neutral. But it's delayed, it takes you know four to six months for these rate hikes to apply. So I think the Fed's making a big mistake. I think it's gonna put us into deflation next year. Uh, I know Elon Musk has tweeted about it and he like, it's funny, because when he tweets about things like, oh, we're gonna be in a recession by summer or next winter, like he did it last year almost at this time. Everything he does, like, if you really think about Elon Musk, he just, kind of speaks his mind and really doesn't care many things about him. But most of the time, he's a very highly intelligent person. Like most of the time he's right. Uh, but he did say that we're gonna have a deflationary environment. And I totally agree with him because the comps from 2022 with, with the high energy prices and, and all, the, all, all, all the traveling and stuff like that that everyone wanted to do because they were cooped up for the past couple of years, it's extremely hard comps with high inflation, things are tightening, unemployment's probably gonna go up. So in that case, year over year, it, it might be deflation. And I could very well see that because I don't see it pivoting at all to, to more inflation, in my opinion. So the Fed has, uh, we're at 3.25% uh, as a federal funds rate right now. We got a 150 more basis points left. We have two more Fed funds meetings. So most likely we'll do a 75 basis points and a 50 basis points the remainder of this year. What I think is going to happen is I actually think the Fed's going to do um, a 75 the next meeting. They're going to see how much it's slowing down and how much it's actually, you know, uh, stopping. And then I think they're going to either go to a 25 or maybe they'll just pause, probably a 25. So I think that's, so if you're in the market, that's actually bullish for you. So basically there's, 
less tightening than what's priced in the market right now. So the market prices in things obviously um, as as a uh, you know as at the, as things tighten. So I do think the U-turn will be sooner. Uh, if you look at the minutes or or the the the, the dot sheet, uh, it looks like they're going to U-turn in the late summer, early fall of next year. So I think they're going to U-turn in the spring next year. That's my, well. Yeah, probably in the spring, maybe early summer. So they're gonna pause for a little bit, but then they're gonna U-turn and start lowering rates because they're gonna see how bad everything's getting. So that's my opinion. So the market has a priced in for a pretty long time out. 52-week uh, lows, like I said earlier, that in September, we hit you know the QQQ and the SPY and the Dow all hit new 52-week lows, which the reason it's being is, you know, usually how, how things work is it goes SPACs, fall first, then small caps, then mid caps, then large caps. And the last in the fall are like the really big, safe, fleet of safety giants, which are Apple and Tesla, in my opinion. They finally started to significantly fall. Um, Apple is sending some scary news out saying like, you know, they're not sure if, uh, um, you know, they're not sure on the Apple demand. They're saying that their lower entry level models aren't really, like they're available now, but usually they take months to become available in a, in a hot market. So. There's all kinds of indicators showing that we're seeing some pain and, and this is good. So we need this to happen um, in order to have the market fully bottom reset and then we'll go up from there. So it's a good thing. So if you're a long-term investor, you know these are just great buying opportunities. Let me see where I'm at here. Yeah, so they're just great. They're, they're really just great buying opportunities and, and, and people look at the opposite. Like people, really what you shouldn't be doing is you shouldn't be waiting for the market at the bottom because no one knows what the bottom is or you see you go on CNBC or or some of these uh, you know TV uh, site or TV uh, programs where they're like oh well we're gonna wait for the spy to go to 3500 we're gonna wait this we're, we're gonna wait for the S&P to go to 3400 we think a good buying point is 3200 well what if it never hits that and then you just lost all this opportunity to buy down here um, so I think that's a really bad idea you should really just look at the fundamentals look at your valuations look at your favorite stocks and then just dollar cost average, if you're one, so you never miss the bottom. That that way you don't miss the bottom and just make sure you never have zero dollars in cash. So then you're always in a position of power. So that's that's kind of how you got to do it, in my opinion. So some of, some of my favorite stocks for uh, this month are definitely Meta. Meta is hammered. Their their PE is like almost single digits, if not single digits. It's like, it's like between a nine and a 12, which in, a normal market, that's like the value, the, 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 the PE of like a bank. So yeah, obviously this is a growth company. They're, they're getting into the metaverse. It's just insane to me that Meta is selling at, you know, an evaluation of a bank. So if you basically Wall Street and everyone's written off metaverse, like, you know, uh, with the Apple's privacy policy not being around so they can't feed advertisers premium content or as easy and the pivot they're going to the metaverse they think that that Meta's done. Like their best days are behind it, which, you know, Zuckerberg as a CEO, like like him or hate him, he's young, he's driven, he's smart, he 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 he's he has no intentions of laying off the gas as a company. I think he's one of those guys where he won't let his company fail. So he will figure it out. So I think that's a great buy right now. It's at multi-year lows. So that's one of my favorites. Shopify, uh, obviously with a recession, things slow down. So uh, you know, obviously as a, as a mid to mid to small business e-com, uh, platform for, for consumers, you know, this, this one's hammered completely now too. So, uh, this is my fa This is like a mini Amazon. I look at it as like, I think they have the Amazon, uh, you know, Amazon tried taking their business years ago and they couldn't do it. So, you know, they have their niche in the market and it's a great one. It's a reoccurring subscription service. They're always adding new features. Uh, once we get back into a uh, non-recessionary environment, they're just gonna go beast mode in my opinion. Uh, NVIDIA, they are not uh, at like COVID lows, uh, but they are on their trajectory down still. Love NVIDIA, they're, you know, se semiconductors with AI, robots, uh, chips, technology, computers, like, NVIDIA is a crucial player to the future and they are the industry leader. Uh, so as this one just keeps falling, I'll keep buying. Uh, I do think it could personally go to like a hundred, maybe to even like $80 in the future. It's right, I think it's at like 125, 120 right now. I've been buying it since 180. Uh, that's when I started my position. I'm just dollar cost averaging down because I just wanted to make this thing really big because I believe it in the future. Palantir, uh, Alec Carp actually spoke on uh, CNBC recently for an interview and 
Um, it's a very complicated business model to understand, but I do think he is on to something and he's ahead of everyone else in this field. And, and he sees something that no, that most people can't see right now. Kind of like how most successful big companies like Tesla, Amazon, uh, Apple, you know, back in the day, people didn't understand those business models, but I think that he, you know, he's on to something, something very futuristic, something very crucial and needed to, uh, grow these big companies with, with, uh, AI and, uh, uh, you know, basically technology. So he's a very smart guy. So I think this is when you should be buying. It actually rallied towards the end of the end of the month. I was buying at like 725, 750. And I think it's over $8 right now. Even though the market was like hitting new lows, this thing was going off. So just kind of interesting. So that's all I got. Uh, I might make a video later today about, um, uh, uh, you know, a couple other things, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, so if you guys like this video, I'm trying to get 1,000 subs by the end of October. So we'll see if we can make that happen. Uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, till tomorrow, peace.